Greetings, high-minded viewers, and welcome to Our Noble Lineage. Today we will continue our exploration on the history of secular and religious vegetarian societies in the West, particularly in Victorian England. During the mid to late 19th century, England experienced a great increase of interest in vegetarianism. Although there are some diverging opinions about the exact year the term was coined, many believe that the word vegetarian was first used in 1847 at the forming of the Vegetarian Society in England. On today's show, we are honored to have John Gilhenny, author of Familiar Strangers, The Church and the Vegetarian Movement in Britain between 1809 to 2009, share his thoughts on Christian vegetarian societies. His familiarity with the topic began in the early 1990s when Mr. Gilhenny participated in Christian vegetarian campaigns by sharing books on the topic penned by vegetarian clergy. In addition, Mr. Gilhenny produced the booklet Christian Vegetarianism, A Biblical Approach to Life, which was published by the Fellowship of Life based on animal theology. He has been involved with Veg for Lent as well as the Christian Vegetarian Association UK. The Order of the Golden Age was a Christian-based association founded in 1895 to promote the Bible's teaching of mercy and vegetarianism to the religion's faithful. In the Bible's book of Genesis 19.3 to 19.5, it is stated, Even as the green herb have I given you all things, but flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. And surely your blood of your lives will I require, at the hand of every beast will I require it, and at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man. By 1909 the Order of the Golden Age was extraordinarily successful and there was an unprecedented interest in their cause. The Order was active in 47 countries and distributed over 200,000 bound books, booklets and pamphlets in one year. A fruitarian restaurant opened in the famous Harrods department store which was right up the street from the headquarters of the Order. In 1910 a fundraising concert was held attracting 6,000 guests. What would have been some of their greatest campaigns or greatest successes even? To my mind, the fact that they were able to, to organize concerts at the Albert Hall, um, attracting European royalty, all of the equivalent really to, to today's celebrity oh, culture, mm -hmm. the, the most you know, prominent royalty of, mm -hmm. and, and names and th that you could Top get. And apparently King Edward um, endorsed the, the event as well, you know. Oh. To be able to organize an event like that on more than one occasion, and mm. we're talking about a sellout concert as well, 6,000 right. tickets been sold and various oh, dignitaries huge. been attached, uh, been attracted to it, write-ups in the Times and all the rest of it. Now, compare that to today's situation, and it's difficult to imagine anything other than the RSPCA being able to, mm. to organize an event like that, for example, you know, right. anything other than a, a really right. established and huge animal protection society. And, and to some extent, I suppose you could that, that, that's one indication of the type of um, level of momentum that the Order of the Golden Age attained by the mm. 1900s, and also of uh, Sidney Beard's ability to maneuver within the upper classes. That's mm. something he was quite adept at, at achieving. The ardent members of the Order of the Golden Age traveled to towns and villages to talk about vegetarianism and hand out pamphlets. They were idealistic and sincere volunteers who truly believed in promoting their noble and compassionate cause. Reverend Ferri uh, Ferrier, Ferrier earlier on, I mean, he embarked on a, a lecturing tour in 1903 which uh, embraced about 50 um, different um, church halls and theosophical mm. lounges and, and so forth. Mm. Um, in the early days they were very keen to take this message directly to church halls and be quite upfront about it, you know, that they, they wanted to um, state that it was arguably sinful in, in the fallen sense to be mm. um, treating animals like some sort of basic uh, um, commodities mm. and uh, foodstuffs in, in waiting. Mm. By 1911, the order was selling as many as 8,000 books at the one-day events that they organized throughout the year. Lectures and talks were held every other week at the headquarters in London, England, frequently with journalists present to report on the information provided at the meetings. 
All of this was accomplished through a devoted staff made up entirely of volunteers. With the onset of World War I, the pressures of the situation impacted the food supply and caused the British Ministry of Food to explore ways to reduce meat consumption. When the Ministry introduced No Meat Days, the order saw an increase in the sales of their recipe booklets. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Our noble lineage will be right back after this brief message with today's show on the Order of the Golden Age. Thank you for joining us again on Our Noble Lineage for this week's showing feature, the Christian-based Vegetarian Association, Order of the Golden Age. The Order of the Golden Age was fortunate that its founder and president, as well as editor of its journal, The Herald of the Golden Age, was Sidney Beard, who had the ability to eloquently and passionately express his thoughts for the vegetarian cause. Sidney Beard was a very shrewd um, individual who had a very keen eye on his audience. And he anticipated being interrupted and mm. you know, asked to leave and all the rest mm -hmm. of it. A lot of clergymen arrived at his meetings with the avowed intent of doing just that, but mm -hmm. they all listened to what he had to say because they realized how cogent and mm -hmm. compassionate his message was. In November 1902, Mr. Beard wrote the article titled Peter's Vision which was published in the Herald of the Golden Age, showing his natural eloquence and passion for the vegetarian cause. For until Christian men and women cease to be polluted by participating in this wholesale outpouring of innocent blood, which is daily taking place, until pagan ethics cease to prevail in our midst, and until humanness is taught in our churches to be an essential part of Christianity, there can be but slight justification for expecting any appreciable degree of social amelioration, or the dawning of a golden age wherein peace, health and spirituality shall prevail upon earth. The order stayed true to its Christian roots by sending out mailings specifically to Christian pastors, these mailings explain the connection between Christ's mercy and the mercy that human beings should show to God's creatures. They asked the pastors to use their sermons to help their congregations understand that Christ's call for love and compassion ultimately led to vegetarianism. The order also sent these mailings to Pope St. Pius X, who was reported to have converted to a plant-based diet. In January of 1907, the Order of the Golden Age became extremely resolute in their, their, their attitude with the churches. They felt, well, you know, we've asked you nicely enough for long enough. And they issued a direct challenge in the January edition of the Herald of the Golden Age um, to the clergy, um, more so than in any previous issue. And this was sent to all of the senior prelates in Britain and indeed to the Pope. Um, by July, it was declared that there was no secret that the Pope had become a vegetarian, Pope oh. Pius, now Saint Pius uh, X. Um, it was quite well reported by the, the Central oh. News Agency. And the interesting aspect is that it, 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 apparently it was um, indicated, at, at the very least, that he, he changed his diet in the early part of 1907, after receiving oh. a, a direct letter from um, oh. Sidney Beard. It was looked on as uh, something of a quiet coup by uh, oh. the Order of the Golden Age. The British vegetarian movement also attracted other famous converts like dietic specialist Dr. Josiah Oldfield and Mr. Henry Salt, who is known for being the first writer to advocate for animal rights. He had written the book titled A Plea for Vegetarianism, a literal piece that was read by one of the greatest people in the cause for peace, Mahatma Gandhi. The Order of the Golden Age had international head branches, including um, branches in Natal, in South Africa, and in Bombay, in India. Now, mm. obviously, 
Gandhi was quite active in both those uh, spheres politically. The, the main connection really would be through um, Dr. Hosea Oldfield, um, a towering figure of the um, vegetarian movement historically. Um, but on a wider scale, he is infamous for being Gandhi's roommate during the 1890s when they studied law uh, in London. They founded a, a, a vegetarian group called the West London Food Reform Society in Bayswater, oh. um, the two of them and remained lifelong friends. Although Gandhi was already a vegetarian before he read the book, he kept the diet only because his mother had required him to vow that he would be a vegetarian. He did not understand the reason behind it and looked forward to the day he could eat meat. The book changed Gandhi's perspective so dramatically that it became his mission to spread the vegetarian ideal. He wrote, It was Mr. Salt's book which showed me why and apart from my adherence to a vow administered to me by my mother, it was right to be a vegetarian. He showed me why it was a moral duty incumbent on vegetarians not to live upon fellow animals. There was a book published recently um, by one of Gandhi's grandchildren, um, which clearly maintained that it was the vegetarian movement that, that taught Gandhi the basis of politics organizing meetings, getting the word out, raising resources, enlisting patrons and allies. Yeah. All of these things were where he really learned the ropes of, of, of yeah. later strategy. Yeah. And Gandhi, um, after he left England in, in, the 18, in 1891, after qualifying as a barrister, he, um, he did promote Christian vegetarianism, um, yeah. specifically in South Africa during the mid-1890s. The group he, um, he ran at the time was um, known as the Esoteric Christian Union, uh, which is basically a theosophical um, mm -hmm. society. To the end of his, his life, mm -hmm. uh, he did consider himself a member of the London, the London Vegetarian Society. With respect for all life, including the potential for life found in eggs, vegetarians should refrain from eating eggs. I think Gandhi in his memoirs mentions that they had an ongoing um, dispute between themselves as to whether they should eat eggs, you know, and Oldfield said yes, and Gandhi said, well, no, it's life, potential life that you're eating, and Oldfield said, well, only if it's fertilized. So Gandhi declared eventually that, you know, if, um, if, if you could prove that an egg wasn't fertilized, then I won't eat, mm. you know, then I'll eat it. But if you mm. can't, and that's usually the case, then I'll mm. give them a miss. <laughs> Throughout the Holy Bible, the principles of non-violence are clearly outlined, such as in Proverbs 15, 17, where it is stated, Better is dinner of herbs where love is, than a stalled ox and hatred therewith. With numerous examples of guidance for compassionate living found in the Bible, the Order of the Golden Age advocated the message that Christians leading a lifestyle that was free from animal consumption would be most in accordance with the benevolent teachings of Jesus. Blessed viewers, thank you for joining us for today's Our Noble Lineage. Please join us next week for the finale of Merciful Christian Heritage, Order of the Golden Age, and Early Vegetarian Movements. Up next is Between Master and Disciples here on Supreme Master Television. May inner tranquility be your everlasting heavenly lullaby. Visit familiarstrangers.co.uk for info on author John Gilhenny and the upcoming release of his book Familiar Strangers, The Church and Vegetarian Movement in Britain between 1809 to 2009. To learn more about the Order of the Golden Age, please visit www.ordergoldenage.co.uk For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash nl.